Hi, Verbling. My name is Michaela. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. And today, we're going to be talking about the differences between British English and American English. So we'll have a little bit of discussion about what you guys think about the two. And we'll talk about some specific vocabulary differences and pronunciation differences. I'll wait just a couple minutes for some more students to join. Hi, Carmenza. How are you? Hello. How are you? I'm doing very well. Where are you from? I'm from Colombia. Awesome. What time is it for you right now? Um, it's uh, 8, 8 o'clock p.m. 8 p.m. All right. So not too different from me. I'm 6 p.m. So we're just two hours apart. Ah, okay. Great. I don't think I've ever had you in a class before. Have you been with Verbling a long time? Yes, but uh, not with you. Uh, sometimes with Lorraine and I don't remember, Lauren, I think, yes. Mm -hmm. We have several other excellent teachers. So. Yes, that's true. All right. And how long have you been learning English? Um, in Verbling? Uh, for in general. Ah, in general. I think two years ago, I think, yes. Excellent. Uh, yes, now I'm, I'm in Berlin for two months. Yes. Wow, very cool. All right. Do a nor? Are you there? Sure, can you hear me now? Hi, yes, I yes. can. Much better. Yeah, thanks. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Would you like to introduce yourself to the class? Yeah. Um, my name is Dua Noor. I'm from Egypt. I'm almost 19 years old. Uh, I study English and French at Al-Azhar University. And that's it. Awesome. Glad to have you in this one and glad your microphone is working better. Okay. Dennis, would you like to reintroduce yourself for the new class? Uh, okay, I'm Dennis from Moscow, from, from Russia, from Moscow. Awesome. And how long have you been with Verbling? Um, I've been here for two months, two and a half months. That's a pretty good amount of time. Glad to have you here. Well, yes, yes. Okay. And Simple Man, you're going to have to remind me of your real name. I mean, if would, do you prefer I call you Simple Man or your actual name? Well, actually, it doesn't make difference. You can call me whatever <laughs> you prefer. But okay. My name, is, my name is Vinicius, but uh, you can call me Vinny. Oh, perfect. That's a that's a nice nickname. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm. I have been ha I have been having classes on, on verbling for one week and two days. Oh wow! So you're pretty new to verbling. Do you like it so yeah. far? Yeah, yeah, it's great. There awesome. Are lots of great teachers. Mm-hmm. Very good for pronunciation. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, and Luis. Will you reintroduce yourself to the new class? Tell us how long you've been with Verbling. Okay, hi, teacher. Nice to, get, nice to see you again. Mm -hmm. My name is Luis. I'm from Brazil. And I live in a small city in southeast of Sao Paulo State. Cool. And how long have you been studying with Verbling? In fact, I, I have been watching Verbling class for a long time, but as a premium, about two weeks. Very cool. And do you like the change? Do you think you're learning more now that you're a premium member? Yes. I definitely think that it's nice to be able to speak in class. But no matter what, I think the classes are helpful, even if you're not a premium member. Okay. All right. Reda? 
Am I saying your name right? Reda Salah? Salah? Um, I can't hear you, Reda. You might have to unmute yourself. There is a microphone, a red microphone button in the top left right of your screen above the Verbling chat box. Yes, sir. Excellent. Okay. So will you introduce yourself for us and tell us how long you've been with Verbling? Yes. Right, uh, my name is Reda. You heard me, sir? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My name is Reda. I am uh, from Egypt. Uh, I'm 19 years old. Uh, I am uh, a student in another university. Um, I, I have uh, uh, two sisters and uh, one brother. Uh, I am. Uh, that's all. That's all. Okay. Six. Awesome. Good to have you in class. Uh, yes. Yes. All right. Next student is Mrahmed Ahmed. Ahmed, yeah, Ahmed. Hi. Okay, and will you introduce yourself for us and tell us how long you've been with Verbling? Sure. Uh, my name is Ahmed. 28 uh, years old. I'm from uh, Dubai. I uh, have been with the, I have been studying with Verbling for uh, around of like uh, seven days or so, uh, and um, I'm planning to study English followed by master program. Very so, cool. Yeah. Uh, so I think this website is a good website to improve my language and my pronunciation. Excellent. I agree. Yeah. Good to have you in class. Thank you. Okay. So today, since we're talking about British English and American English, I would like to hear some opinions from you guys. So tell me what you think. Do you think that they're um, very different or very similar? Do you think one is a nicer sounding language than the other. Sometimes people have a preference for British English or American English. Um, and I'd like to know how you guys feel about it. I'm going to start with Carmenza and ask for opinions. Carmenza, what do you think? Uh, okay, I think uh, it's not uh, um, a lot of difference, but I prefer American English because I can understand it better. Uh, but I think it's, it's, it's the same. It's, it's, it's good if you have a, a people who speak a, with a British accent or American accent. It's, it's, it's not uh, different for me. Okay, good. So you think they're pretty similar? Yes, uh, yes. Sometimes I take a class with a teacher who speaks uh, British English and and I do it for um, for um, practice because it's, it's a, a little difficult to understand but it, but it sounds good. I think it's good. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Dennis, give us your opinion on the matter. Well, uh, a big difference, of course. First of all, there is no British accent. Uh, there are several British accents from a uh, different part of England, and because of this reason, it's just absolutely impossible for <laughs> foreigners to start speaking with uh, this pronunciation and to learn British accent and speak with British accent. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, there's a lot of different accents in the UK, too. There's Irish, there's Scottish, there's different kinds of British accents, so it can be really difficult. Oh, even, and, even in England, not about Scotland or Ireland. Ireland, mm -hmm. uh, actually, it's uh, more similar to American pronunciation. You think so? Uh, Irish pronunciation, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's not British, it's more American. Okay, so you think English is, uh, British English is more difficult than Irish English to understand? Uh, well, it depends. Uh, my first class here was uh, 
Martin's class is from Britain, and sometimes I didn't understand what um, mm. he was speaking. Yeah, it's hard to go from one to the other because the the flow, the melody of the language is completely different. Yeah, you, you, when I watch uh, British movies, for example, or British TV series, I, sometimes I, I don't understand a mm -hmm. lot. But I don't have any problem with understanding when I watch uh, movies and people speak with uh, American pronunciation. No. Mm -hmm. All right, Dua, what do you think about it? British and American accents. Yes, yeah, sometimes, you know, especially nowadays when I listen or watch to any movie, I can distinguish between British and American movies. Um, I listen to some videos about the difference between the pronunciation of British and American accent and a really American accent more. It's, uh, it's important to, to distinguish between both of them. Yeah, definitely. There's big differences sometimes. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> All right. Luis? Okay. I have um, realized that there are, there are some differences between writing, speaking, and accent. Mm -hmm, definitely. There's big differences there. Do you have a preference to one or the other? I have been studying American English. Mm. So, sometimes so it's, I... Please, go on. It's a little more... If you study one, sometimes it can be difficult to go to the other. When I tended between American English and uh, British English, I have more difficult in the second one. Okay. All right. Um, Ahmed, how do you feel about it? Um, actually, when I start learning English, um, it, uh, like I haven't noticed any difference between them. There is no difference at all. But um, uh, while I'm studying, uh, I start to feel difference. Uh, I feel that, like American English is like more fluent, and we are uh, an environment like we are impacted by uh, American English more than uh, British English. And the schools, for uh, for example, the curriculums are based on American curriculum spaces. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think I used to, uh, I used to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely more media like movies and music in American English than British English, so sometimes it can be more common. Right. Mm. Good point. Reda, what do you think? I think uh, British uh, American English is. Uh, is more uh, is wide uh, uh, is uh, used all over the world uh, uh, than British English. Uh, it uh, it used in business and uh, every uh, and everything. Uh, I should uh, I sh um, I think I should uh, learn American English uh, than American uh, uh, than British English uh, because uh, I'll use it uh, I'll use it in the future. Mm. Okay, good point. And Vinny, will you give us your opinion on American versus British English? <clears throat> well, actually I think I have no preference between both uh, British or American English, but uh, British English is really, really, uh, it's really uh, difficult to understand, uh, mainly the Scottish one which is really difficult to understand, but, well, I have no preference. Okay, all right. Well, um, there's British English, there's American English, but 
like we talked a little bit about before, there's a lot of countries that speak English. So what are some other countries you guys can think of that speak English aside from England and the United States? New Zealand. New Zealand Australia. is a good one. What else? Australia. 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 What else? Ireland. Ireland. Yep. What else? Uh, South Africa. South Africa. That's a good one. Sometimes people forget. What else? And former British colonies. Puerto Rico. India. Puerto Rico. That's a good point. That's a an American territory. So territory. Yeah, it's it's not officially a state, but it is kind of part of the U.S. But it is also its own nation. So Puerto Rico speaks English. What Jamaica. else? Jamaica. Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Jamaica, Jamaica speaks English. What else? In India. India speaks a lot of English. What else? Trinidad Tobago. Trinidad Tobago. Yeah. Uh -huh. Canada. New Zealand. Canada. Yeah. New Zealand. New Zealand. Mm -hmm. What else? I don't think anyone said Scotland yet. Ireland. 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 Oh, Wales. Wales. Scotland. Scotland. I think we have almost all of them. UK. What? UK. UK. The UK. So yeah, the UK. UK is like a big grouping of several nations together. Yeah. Um, okay, I think we have pretty much all of them. There are some other small ones like Barbados and other territories of the U.S., but we got the main ones. Um, does everyone have the notes open? We have uh, an exercise I'd like to do with you guys, and it's about the difference in vocabulary between British English and American English. Usually, most of the words are the same, obviously, because it's the same language, but there's definitely some words that change and if you use them with me I won't understand what you're talking about and if I use the American with someone who speaks uh, British English they're gonna be totally confused so it's good to know the difference between these for communication and for understanding what people are saying so this is a British English versus American English worksheet and there's an example because what I'm going to ask you to do is they provide one and you have to translate it into American English. So um, they're providing us with all of the UK expressions and then we have to see what the American English expression is. And the example is, in the UK you play football, in the US you play soccer. So if you tell me that you're playing football, I'm not going to understand what you're saying because we have football, but it's a different sport than football in the UK. So there are just some big vocabulary differences. Hmm? I mean, soccer game means football. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so soccer is how we say football. In the UK, it's called football. Here, it's called soccer. And then, of course, there's American football, but in the US, we just call it football. So if a British person said football to me, I would think they were talking about a different sport. Mm -hmm, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to ask you guys to try to fill in the blanks. And if you don't know the answer, that's totally fine because today we're learning some of these. So if you don't know it, then I'll just give you the answer. But I would like you to read the questions. So number one, Carmenza, will you read? Are you there, Carmenza? I can't hear you, Carmenza. You might be muted. Um, okay, Carmenza, I can't hear you, so if you need help, let me know in the Verbling chat box. Hello, hello. There you are, okay. So we yes. read, read number one for us. Okay, but I don't, I can see there the reading. Are you on the chat box? Yes. Maybe the Google chat box. Do you see it now? No. Let me see. I, I have it here. Let me see. Is um, 
Okay, in the UK, UK you, you eat biscuits? Yes? Uh -huh. Uh -huh, biscuits. Uh, okay, in U USA you eat um, bread? I don't know what is biscuits. Bread? Is it candy? Yeah. It's not candy. Does it's anyone else have a guess? A cookie, cookie. yeah. So cookie. It's, yeah, in the UK they call it biscuits, and in the US it's called cookie. And here in the US, biscuits actually refers to a type of bread. So, Carmenza, you are correct. Here, biscuit is a type of round bread that's commonly eaten with breakfast or dinner sometimes. Okay. Um, all right. Number two, Dennis, will you read? Uh, in the UK, you buy a return ticket. In the US, you buy, I have no idea what. <laughs> and does anyone know the answer to this one? Round trip? Mm -hmm. Yes, a round trip. Round trip. So a round trip ticket means you go there and you come back. And so in this way it's, you know, round. You go, you come back. And so it's called a round trip ticket. All right, number three, any, do what? Any, oh. any ticket, I mean, an airport, in uh, a stadium. So any ticket, any ticket at all where you go and come back, it's called a round trip. So a plane ticket, a bus ticket, um, uh, I don't know, anything anywhere, anything where you're making a trip, a passage somewhere, obviously not for a movie ticket or something because there's only, you know, one movie. But if you're making a trip somewhere, you can always say round trip. Okay. Okay. Dua, will you do the next one? Mm -hmm. In the UK, you take a lift. In the US, you take an... No, I don't know. Does anybody know what a lift is called in the US? Elevator. elevator. Yeah, an elevator. <laughs> exactly. So here it's an elevator, and in the UK, they call it a lift. Mm -hmm. All right. Luis, will you do the next one? Okay. In the UK, you go to the cinema. In the US, you go to the movies. Yeah, movies. good job. Movies. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Number five is for Ahmed. In the UK. Excuse me, sis, teacher. Uh, yeah? Cinema, what we call it? Movies. 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 Mm -hmm. Go Movie to center? the or movies? Just movies. Go to the movies. Just movies. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. No problem. Okay, Ahmed, will you do the next? In the UK, you wear uh, trousers. In the US, you wear pants. Mm -hmm. That one's a funny one because um, pants in the UK means underwear. Huh? <laughs> so in the US, it's underwear and pants. Underwear goes underneath, obviously, and pants go on top. And in the UK, pants are what you wear under, and trousers are what you wear over. Okay, number six. Um, Reda, will you read number six? Yes. Uh, in the UK, uh, you, go to, uh, you go on a holiday. In the US, you go on uh, uh, vacations. Vacations? Yeah, a vacation, singular. Vacation. vacation is actually like an uncountable, so you never say vacations with an S at the end. It's always just vacation. Okay. Um, and this one is one that's very commonly made a mistake because holiday in the U.S. means a specific day like Christmas, Easter, or um, Thanksgiving. Those are holidays. But a time when you go to the beach for a week, that's called a vacation. So it can be confusing to use holiday for me. <laughs> um, number seven, Vinny, will you read? In the UK, you wait in a queue. In the US, you wait in a line. Yeah, a yeah. line, exactly. Uh, number eight, back to Carmenza. Okay, in the UK, you 
put petrol in your car in the USA, you put oil in your car. What do you guys think? Gas. You... Gas, yeah. You put gas in your car. Okay. All right. Number nine is for Dennis. Uh, well, uh, in the UK, you drive a uh, worry. I think it's mm -hmm. a worry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in the US, you drive, as far as I know, it's just a truck. Yeah. Yeah, a truck. So a truck. in the UK, it's called a lorry. And I probably would not have any idea what you were saying if you said a lorry. I would not understand at all. <laughs> a lot of these words, actually, I'm learning as well because I'm not completely familiar with some of the British vocabulary. So sometimes I barely even know what it means. Well, the number... I'm not sure that British people really use this word. Well, you don't think so? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a quite artificial maybe. maybe oh, okay. So old. maybe it's not in, in common use. No, Could, be. This, Could be. Could be. Okay. Maybe, maybe I'm mistaken. Uh, Dua, would you read the next one? Yes. In the UK, the third season is autumn. In the US, the third season is fall. If you L, yeah. if you L, -L right? F A L L. F A. Okay. F A L L. So this yeah. is similar to the last class we were talking about. Words that are spelled the same, but have different meanings. Fall. You can say fall like um, to go on the ground, like when you lose your balance and you fall over, you fall on the ground. Or you can say fall is in the season, which is the yeah. same as autumn. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions so far? Yeah, uh, what's, what's the, uh, can you repeat the four seasons again in, in America? Uh, there's winter, spring, summer, and fall. Mm -hmm. So you Sorry. can say autumn too, but fall is more common. Uh, what's okay. a lorry? A lorry is a truck. All right. Okay. okay. Um, Luis, will you read the next one, number 11? Yes. In the UK, you wear a jumper. In the US, you wear a sweater. Yeah, a sweater. Excellent. Thank you. Um, next you one, jumper? Ahmed. Okay. I'm sorry, what? Okay. Uh, do you use jumper? Do you use uh, this word? Um, I would not be the best person to consult about the use of that word, but I do think they use it. I've definitely heard it before. Some of them are um, like synonyms. For instance, in American English, jumper doesn't doesn't mean the same thing at all. So in British English, they probably use sweater too, but they also can say jumper. And the same with truck and lorry. They might say truck sometimes and lorry other times, but in American English, you can't say lorry. Lorry doesn't mean anything in American English. And so, uh, the jumper as well. I can't say jumper in US. Nobody understands me. Well, you can, but jumper means something different. Jumper would mean um, when you have the pants that connect to the top. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. It's also called a romper sometimes. So when you have your pants that connects to your top and it's all one piece, sometimes mm -hmm. that's called a jumper. Mm -hmm. So if you said jumper in the U.S., I would think you were talking about something else, something different. Something funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is a little funny, yeah. Isn't it called uh, overall? It can but... be called overalls, but overalls are like a, a specific kind of jumper. So there's like a lot of different kinds, but overalls are the kind that um, you wear a shirt with overalls. So they have the top part, but you wear a t-shirt underneath overalls. Okay. Okay. Any other questions so far? No. Okay. Um, Ahmed, I think it's your turn to read, right? Or did you just read? No, I didn't. 12. Okay. Your and turn you? then. 
in the UK you eat sweets in the US you eat uh, candies yeah candy so candy is another one of those non countable words so we just say candy unless you're talking about um, two different kinds of specific candy like if I were talking about M&Ms and Skittles I might say candies because they're two types of candy but if I'm just talking about candy in general we don't use the plural got it okay number 13 can I ask about the spill of candy K A N D Y like that it's spelled with a C C A N D Y okay thanks. exactly someone spelled it for us in the chat box awesome Reda, will you read the next one? 13? Yes. In the UK, you live in a flat. In the US, you live in an apartment. Exactly, an apartment. Thank you. Number 14, Vinny. In the UK, <coughs> you live with a flatmate. In the US, you live with a roommate. Mm hmm. A roommate. Does anyone know how to spell roommate? R O O A M M A T A. Exactly. The last letter is E, but yeah. E. Yeah. Sometimes uh, that can be difficult because there's two sets of double letters. But yes, roommate. Okay. Number 15. Back to the beginning with Carmenza. In the UK, you eat chips. In the US, you eat um, chips. <laughs> no, I don't know. Okay, so chips in the US means something different than in British English. Does anyone know? It's a French uh, fries. Exactly. Uh, so if you say chips in the UK... Potatoes? Potatoes? Yeah, fri they're like fried long potatoes like you see at McDonald's or anything. So in the US they're called french fries and in the UK they're called chips. Mm -hmm. And number 16 is kind of related to this one. Dennis, will you read 16? Yes, and that's uh, crisps in the uh, UK and that's chips in the US. Exactly. So if you say chips to me, I'm going to think like potato chips. But if you say chips, they're going to think of french fries. And if you say crisps, um, to me, crisps doesn't really mean anything. But to them, it means potato chips. So, 17. That's for Luis. Okay. In the UK, you throw away rubbish. In the US, you throw away garbage. Mm-hmm. Good job. Garbage. 18. Ahmed. I'm sorry, what is 16? Crisps? Uh, uh. Chips. Oh, okay. So in the US, crisps are called chips. And chips in the UK are french fries. Okay. Uh, what's the number we had? Uh, number 18. In the UK, you throw rubbish in the dust bin. Mm -hmm. In the U.S., you throw garbage and and uh, the garbage or and the uh, basket or garbage garbage box. There's more than one answer here. There, you could say garbage can. You could say uh, waste bin. Sometimes people say waste bin, or you could say um, trash can. Trash can, I think, is the most common. But sometimes people will say the garbage can or the waste bin. But never the dust bin. We do not say dust bin in American English. Okay, number 19. Um, is it Ahmed? Is it your turn? No, I just read. Like... Oh, okay, that's what I thought. Um, Vinny then. Back to Vinny. Which one? Number nineteen. In the in the UK, the back of a car is the boot. In the US, the back of a car is the. I have no idea. Trunk. Trunk, yeah. 
in the US, it's called trunk. Um, also, we had a question in the chat box that I will address. So we have a question from Martin, and he says, the thing is it, well, it's not grammatically correct, but he's basically asking if um, flatmate doesn't make more sense than roommate, because he thinks roommate would mo make more sense if you live in the same room together. But that's not the case. So if you have an apartment and there's two bedrooms, and there's two people that live, one in one bedroom, one in the other bedroom, they're still called roommates. Even though they're not sharing one room, they have two rooms, they're still called roommates. So I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. Flatmate doesn't exist in the US. Um, and one more question, Lori means truck. So if you missed that, Lori means truck. These are questions from the chat box I wanted to address before going on. Okay, so number 20, and we're back to Carmenza. Okay, in the UK, the front of the car is uh, the bonnet. In the U US, mm -hmm. the front of the car is the, the front of the car. I don't know. I don't have any. Anybody know this one? Who? Oh. The hood, yeah, the hood. Okay, so those are um, it for the questions about vocabulary. And on the next page, we have the answers to all of those. So if you forget or if you wrote them wrong or anything, you can check the answers here and correct yourself. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a list of other vocabulary words that are different in the US and in the UK. So um, I'm going to ask, Dennis, will you read those vocabulary words, translate them from American to British English? Uh, eager and keen, yeah, this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, eager, keen, uh, it's like I like, yeah, I'm very keen, I like. Um, Sometimes, but usually eager means like you're excited for or you anticipate something. Mm -hmm. So in British English, it can either mean that you're anticipating something, keen can mean you're anticipating, or it can mean that you like something. But eager can only mean that you're anticipating something. Will you continue reading the next three? Okay, uh, exhausted, uh, knackered. Yeah, knackered, knackered. Knackered. Mm -hmm. I've never heard this. Uh, drunk, pissed, uh, crazy, mad. Her name is, she's called, uh, eraser, rub, uh, rubber. Okay, uh, you can stop there. I'll have someone else read the, the rest of them. Um, do you guys have any questions on these so far? Are you confused at all as far as what they mean? Pissed in American language means different, like, is it like, has a different meaning? Which word? Pissed. Yes, it does have a different meaning, and it's actually um, kind of a curse word. So it's not a very appropriate word. It's not a bad, bad word, but it's not something you would say in front of like a five-year-old. Pissed means two things in American English. Um, the first is if you're angry, sometimes you can say pissed. Yeah. But piss is actually a slang term for uh, urine. So uh, when you go to the bathroom, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. piss yeah. is like a slang term for urine. So pissed would mean that it has pee on it, has urine on it. Got it. Um, any other questions about the ones we've read so far? Okay. How you introduce uh, other one that uh, she is called uh, Tressa, and uh, how 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 do you say that she is called? Well, I would. Yeah, she's called. So in British English, um, if I introduced you to my sister, I would say she's called Carly. But 
because I'm from the US, I would usually say, this is my sister, her name is Carly, instead of she's called Carly. OK, OK, thank you. No problem. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, uh, what's uh, the, the difference between uh, crazy and mad? Um, well, mad in British English means crazy, but mad in American English means angry. So if you said mad to me, I would think you were angry, not crazy. Mm. So okay. Yeah, it, it, was, it means something else. Not that we don't have the word, but just means something different. And in British English, it only means crazy. You can't use it to mean angry. OK. Other questions so far? Uh, can, can you say crazy about something? Yeah, you can so say, like, I'm, I'm crazy angry. about cookies. means you oh, means... really, really like them. Oh, uh, yeah. OK. Anything else, guys? No, go ahead. OK. So then I'm going to ask um, Jamil Awan. Hi, Jamil. Uh, hi. Would you like to introduce yourself quickly to the class? Uh, my name is uh, Jamil, and uh, I'm from Pakistan. Excellent. And would you mind reading the rest of the translated words from American English to British English, starting with schedule? Mm, eraser is um, in American, and rubber is in British. Mm -hmm. And schedule or schedule, what you called? In American English, it's pronounced schedule, and in British English, it can be pronounced schedule without that C sound in it. Okay, so in American, uh, it is schedule, and uh, in British, it is timetable. And uh, in American language, it is flashlight, and in British language, it is torch. And um, the next one, in American language, it is elevator. And uh, in the British language, it is lift. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions on the ones he just read? No? Excellent. OK. So Luis, will you finish those for us? OK. Lost my document. Eggplant. Starting with sucker and lolly. Oh, excuse me. Sucker, American English, and lolly, British English. What means? Do you know what a lollipop is? <laughs> it's, no. a ty lolly it's a type of candy on a stick. Lollipop, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. So it's a it's a hard candy on the end of a stick. Okay. Continue, Luis. In American English, eggplant. In British English, aubergine. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh huh. That's, that's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's how it's pronounced. You're right. In American English, stroller. And British. English, push chair, push, push chair. Mm -hmm. In American English, baby carriage. In British English, brand. Oh. Next. In American English, sunscreen. In British English, sunscreen. In American English, line. In British English, heel. Last one, in American English, call, in British English, ring. Next. Uh, yeah, I'll read that one. So the very last one we have is about more about grammar than about vocabulary. So in American English, we would say, I like. And in British English, you have a variety of things you can say. You can say, I'm keen on, I'm fond of, or I fancy. 
And none of those things translate to American English. Although all of them are words in American English, it would be very strange in the US to say, I'm keen on, or I'm fond of, or I fancy. I would know that you were from England or something, because, or that, you know, for me, those are very strange terms, but in the UK, they're very common terms. Okay, so the last thing I would like to do today involves us writing sentences in the chat box. So I would like everybody to write one sentence using an American English term from this list. So pick one of the terms that you want to try in a sentence, write a sentence with it, and put it in the chat box. So right now we're using American English. And then once everybody's written their American English sentence, we'll switch and do a British English sentence. All right, so we already have one from Vinny. I'm not drunk right now. Good. I should hope you're not. <laughs> Excellent use of the word. Anybody else have one ready? I am so eager for Michaela's next English class. Excellent. Um, the only thing is next should come after my name. But other than that, it's perfect. And the use of the American English eager is excellent. So good job. I'm waiting on a couple more American English terms. If you're already finished with your American English sentence, you can go ahead and come up with your British English sentence so you're ready. All right, we have, I've lost my cell phone or mobile phone. All right, that's a good one. So um, the cell phone, I guess, is the American, and mobile phone is the British. Ahmed has, I couldn't wear my pants today because I was drunk. <laughs> wow, okay, so you <laughs> used two. You used pants and you used drunk. Yeah. That's a funny one. <laughs> Does everyone have in, one in? in? In the line. In the line. What? I've, I've lost my pants today in the line because I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could do three all together. All right. Um, Carmenza, do you have one for us? Um, but I don't have chat. Uh, maybe uh, tomorrow uh, we have a holiday uh, in my country. Uh, but in uh, America, you say my tomorrow I uh, on vacation. Exactly. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, that's a perfect use of it. And Alejandro, you're new to the class right now, right? Are you there, Alejandro? Yes, I'm here. Okay. So right now we're. Um, do you have the document open that we're looking at? Uh, not. Uh, I don't know where. Is it? Okay, I'm going to put it in the chat box for you. It's basically just a list of American English and British English vocabulary. And so we're writing sentences with it. So you can look at that, and if you want, you can write a couple sentences for us in the chat box. We've got one more sentence. Um, when the fire occurred, you have to turn off the elevator. Good job, yeah. So can't use an elevator in case of a fire. Now we're going to do British English sentences, so I'd like everybody to write one British English sentence with some of the vocabulary, at least one word, and if you can, try and get more than one word in there, of British English sentences. So English people adore cues. That's true. That's a funny one, because you're right. They do. Okay. Someone, someone's asking for my... Facebook. So I'm going to give them my Facebook. And if any of you want my Facebook, I just put my Facebook name in the chat box. 
So if you need it, it's Michaela Afadani. And you can friend me and give me any suggestions or questions that you want or need. If you want any specific classes done, you can definitely ask me about that. All right, let's get some more British English sentences in here. Do you have Twitter? I don't actually have Twitter. Maybe I should make one, but I've never used Twitter. I don't know why, but I've just never used Twitter. Sorry. It's OK. <laughs> it's, OK. Uh, it is more common, I, I think. Uh, Maybe, more. yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. Um, I have eaten aubergine at lunch today. OK, it's uh, more common to say for lunch than at lunch. But that's a good sentence, and you used aubergine perfectly. Vinny says, you have to use sun cream to avoid getting burned by the sun. Exactly, yeah, a sunburn. Those are terrible. Um, well, you can use either, Vinny. So if you wanted to say to avoid being burned by the sun, you could also say that. Both are, are perfectly um, well there. All right, thank you. No problem. Do we have any other sentences? Carmenza, did you have one for us that you can just say? Are you there, Carmenza? I can't hear you. Yes, but okay. I don't have one. OK. Mm. Well, think Wait. we have a couple more minutes. So think about yes. a sentence with British English, and I'll come back to you in a little, OK? OK. All right, am I waiting on any other sentences? I think I have them all, right? All right, so um, do you guys have any questions right now, then, on anything at all? If not, I have a couple other things we can do. But if you guys have any questions on this topic or on anything that you'd like to ask in general, now is a very good time. Okay. Well, uh, Michaela, how about you? Uh, what do you think about British accent, and can you do a British accent? Um, I might be able to kind of do it, but not well. Definitely not well. And um, give us uh, an example. Oh, like, <laughs> let me think. Okay, what should I say? What should I try to say? Okay, I'll say the sentence that just came in. We just had someone write in the chat box, I'm very tired, so I have to take the lift. That's my, <laughs> that's my best British accent. It's not good. I know it's not good. I'm not good at doing accents. It's better than mine. <laughs> um, yeah, I think British English, to me, it sounds very formal. But other than that, I don't. I think British English, you know, is the same basically. But it sounds very formal to me. So sometimes it's funny because they say things, and it just sounds like it just doesn't sound natural to me because it sounds like it's you know upper class stuff. <laughs> I don't know. Another sentence. I'm not going to do this one in my British. Um... I put uh, petrol in my car. Perfect. Yeah. I put patrol in my car. That's a good sentence. And would anyone like to try out their British accent with Luis's sentence that's in the chat box right now? Does anyone want to be brave and try their British accent? <laughs> well, it's impossible. <laughs> Personally, I even I can I can even mock British accent, not to speak with British accent. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. It's a tough one. But his sentence is, I'm knackered. I've been studying a lot today, so I must go. Bye, everyone. Okay, bye, Luis. I'm a little knackered myself. <laughs> All right. Um, so, well, I guess it's the end of class. We've got two minutes. Thank you guys so much. And um, I have more classes coming up tomorrow. I have four classes, some on pronunciation, some on grammar, and a couple other topics. So uh, I'd love to see you guys again. Thank you so much for taking this class and participating. Bye. Bye, Thank guys. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.